Hey guys, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel and thanks so much for tuning in. Today's video is going to be a review of some new products from Wet n Wild. They are the Color Icon Multi Sticks. They launched a whole range of shades, 13, but I have 12 of them to swatch for you here or tell you about here today. The one I'm missing is called Nocturnal Behavior. It is a matte black shade and when I bought these on the Wet n Wild website, that was the one shade that was out of stock. So I'm gonna be talking about reviewing, demoing all of these in some way, shape or form for you here today. So let's go ahead and dive in. So for starters, each one of these goes for $2.99 individually. So they definitely won't break the bank and they promise to be multitaskers. They're called a multi-stick and they're meant for use everywhere. Eyes, face, lips, you name it. You're supposed to be able to use all of these wherever you want. They say it's a cream to powder formula. And so they, what Wild used to have, like back when I first remember finding them in the drugstore, they used to have sticks like this, but I think all of them were exclusively like highlighter shades. They were shimmery, meant to be used, you know, brow bone across the lid on the cheekbones. They came in very classic highlightery shades and they were a very greasy kind of texture. So I never found that I could wear them on my lids without priming and setting with powder. And even then they sometimes crease, but I still love them, especially as facial highlighters. But these seem to be the replacement for those and they really upped the color selection, which I was super happy to see. And that these were meant to be used everywhere. I thought the formula would be a little bit more sturdy and robust to stop from creasing on the lids. I am a huge pencil fanatic. I love how portable and travel friendly they are and how multi-use they can be. Like I love nude sticks. I actually have a whole video on my channel of eyeshadow stick pencils that are some of my favorites. And what I look for in those is basically to have the ability to be able to use them without priming or setting them. They're just a one and done thing. You apply to your eyes, maybe blend it with a finger or a brush, and then you are good to go. Like that is my ultimate stick shadow pick and that's what I was really hoping these would be. Unfortunately, that hasn't been my experience with these. So I definitely feel like the formula has changed from the original stick formula they had if these are supposed to replace those. Like I said, those were softer, kind of greasier. These feel thicker, waxier. It makes them super, super pigmented no matter where you apply them. Like I, every time I use these was very impressed with the pigmentation, especially with shades that can kind of be hard to get right and not streaky. Like you know, blue, turquoise, the pinks in here, they're gorgeous. But when it came time to use them, the only place I felt like they really worked well for me was on my lips, like using them as a lipstick. So for instance, on my eyes, I tried, first of all, using them alone. The shade, I don't have a clip of this, but because when I first got these, I was just like ripping them open and trying them as I got them. The first shade I used was this one called Burning Bridges. It's this beautiful matte crimson shade. Applied that all over my lids, blended it out with a, uh, not a pencil, with a brush and it felt like you know within an hour maybe two it was a hot creasy mess on my lid I wasn't really paying attention to timing then just because I was going about my day then the next time I tried them it was with this amazing kind of aqua turquoisey shade called not so calm waters and I had primed my eyes with this guy and this I do have a clip of so you'll see me blending it out the pigmentation is insane here absolutely gorgeous cream finish, like a matte finish kind of shade but the clip that you'll see afterwards where it starts creasing was less than an hour, like maybe 30 minutes after I had applied it. And that was with a primer. So that was kind of unfortunate to experience. And then even after that, I went in and applied shadows over top of them, like prime my eyes, use these pencils as kind of a colorful base, and then use shadows over top, this time with the shade Royal, Royal Scam. And even then over the course, uh, it certainly extended the life of the wear setting it with a powder over top, like a powder shadow, but I didn't make it to the end of the day without seeing some light creasing in that shadow. So unfortunately, these do not work for me on the eyes unless it's in some place like on my brow bone used as a highlight shade or something. Because these are multi-use products, I wanted to use them on my face too. So I actually used this shade here, which is called Nudie culture, nudie culture. And I use that as a contour. It's a little light for me, was a very natural looking contour. And unfortunately, even though there's a broad range of shades in this collection, there aren't a whole lot that would be a contour shade for a wide variety of skin tones. So 
This is a little bit of a stretch, but I used it as a contour anyway, and I was pretty pleased with how it looked, but I did notice as I was blending it out, it disturbing my foundation a little bit underneath, which makes sense because like I said, it is a thick, thicker, waxier texture, which I in general have experienced with similar products that have a texture like this. I also used a combination of different shades for my blush. One was this shade Ready, Set, Go, which I'm actually wearing on my lips right now, but I did use it as a blush in the demo you'll see here, along with the shade Burning Bridges again as a blush because Ready, Set, Go wasn't quite as bold and pigmented as I wanted as a blush. So it was a combination of these. I just made like light little marks on my cheeks and blended those out as well. Again, I saw the same sort of effect where it was moving my foundation around underneath. And then as a highlight, I took this shade Champagne Room, which is kind of like a shimmery taupe. I was a little nervous about how it would look as a highlight on my skin tone because it has a good amount of pigment to it underneath, but blend it out, it really turns into more of a sheer champagne shade. And especially with the way that I blend my highlights on the tops of my cheekbones, it's really more of a pounce. I noticed it moving my makeup around a little bit less. So if you wanna make these work on the face, I totally think you can if you just like a pounce, but for some things like the blush where I really needed to diffuse it to get even pigmentation everywhere, that there was just no getting around the fact that it just moved my foundation around. The lips, like I said, are a totally different story. I really like how these were on the lips and given the shade range you could have some totally wild lip art going on with any of these. They last a pretty long time. I think that thicker texture really lends to them staying in place. They don't feather, they don't bleed. Even after eating lunch, I just had some like roasted veggies and stuff. Most of my lip color stayed in place. Again, that was the shade Ready, Set, Go. Here I have it mixed with a little bit of balm with the Lano Lips Lemonade Lip Treatment to give it more of a balmy finish and more of a comfortable texture because they are a little bit drying which I think is what helps them stay like last so well and so long but they're not the most hydrating thing so that's why I have it mixed with this here which is going to affect the longevity of these but in general I really like how they wear um actually one more thing I want to mention I feel like these stain my lips talking about how these were on my lips this reminds me they not only stain my lips but the more, the brighter, more pigmented shades also stained skin elsewhere on my face. Like when I was wearing this bright blue on my eyes, the weirdest thing, you know, it started creasing, but when I went to remove it, like it had stained my eye area. So the finish itself will get worn away or crease or just not last as long, but boy, does that pigment sink into your skin and last for maybe longer than you'd want it to, because when you don't have eyeshadow on or you're just left with this blue tinge to the skin around your eyes, looks a little bit like I got beat up. So just something to be aware of. You definitely want to prime with these if you find that you can make these work for you and not crease under products. I would definitely recommend priming, especially with these more pigmented shades like the blue and the pink as well. Definitely make sure you prime with these just in case, just in case you have some unwanted staining effects. Better safe than sorry. So those are my thoughts on the formula. They're not gonna be my new go-to eyeshadow pencils, unfortunately, and they probably won't make their way into my face routine all that often either. But I do like some of these shades for the lips. It totally just depends on, you know, what you really like in your eyeshadow pencils. And the stuff that creases on me might not crease on you depending on the other products you use around it. It's just for me, for my makeup routine right now, and how I like to wear my products, that, that's been my experience. So hopefully that was helpful. Let's go through the shades now, just in case you're still wanting to try these but aren't sure what shade you want to get. Of course you can find these in drugstores, but I mentioned this in previous videos, I think. If not, it's worth mentioning again. Like I said, I bought these from the Wet n Wild website and I just found that while I like the instant gratification of seeing a shade in the tube when I'm in the drugstore, so often stores aren't fully stocked with the whole line, so shades will be missing or people will have used the ones that are remaining as samplers because drugstores don't have samplers. So I just find that ordering direct from the brand can be more reliable. And When Wild has a lot of promos on their website. Like right now, all eye things are 30% off. And when I bought these, I think the whole website itself, or at least all the face makeup was 30 or 25% off. So they have frequent sales, which means that you get things for even cheaper than they already are, which is great. So in case you're in the same boat where you're ordering some of these off offline, I wanted to show you the full range of swatches. So first, let's Let's start with the shade Nudie Culture. Like I said, this is one that I used as a contour shade, it was a little bit light for me. Then there is the shade that I used as a highlighter, which is Champagne Room. It is a light champagne, but I would say it has some cooler taupe undertones.
tones. Then there's Born to Flirt, which is a soft peachy pink with a metallic finish. And next up is Ready, Set, Go. Again, the shade that I'm wearing on my lips today. This is kind of a mid-tone burgundy crimson, again, with a metallic finish. And then an even deeper burgundy shade with a matte finish is Burning Bridges. And this is one that I really like for the lips as well. Next up is a deep matte brown called Chocolate Cheat Day. It's super rich and could also be used as a contour shade. I just wish that for a collection that claims to be multi-use, they had a wider range of these nude shades, something in between Chocolate Cheat Day and nudie culture so that a broader range of skin tones could have something to shade and highlight with. Then there's the shade Keep Diggin', which is a pretty bright yellow gold tone with a metallic finish to it. And then getting into the more colorful shades, we have the bright pink, which is called Popular. This is another metallic shade with a bright cotton candy kind of hue. Moving on to some blues, we have this amazing, vibrant, deep, like ocean blue. This is called Blue La La. It has a slightly metallic finish. It's not quite as matte as some shades, but it's also not quite as shimmery or shiny as the other shades. And next is Not So Calm Waters, that matte turquoise that is just so intensely pigmented that you need to remember to wear an eye primer with. And last, there are some purples. This gorgeous soft matte lilac is the shade Lavender Bliss. I guess it's really more like a soft lavender, but it is super beautiful. And then a deep metallic grapey purple, which is the shade Royal Scam. Again, I'm overall really impressed with the colors and the pigmentation of the colors in this collection. I just wish the formula had worked a little bit better for me. But I hope this video was helpful for you guys if you were trying to figure out if you were going to try these or if you knew you were just trying to figure out the right shade for you. Hope this video was helpful no matter what and you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Besides that guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys!